Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to go through some examples of problem solving part one. So we're going to focus on number riddles and geometry problems. Now before I get much further into it, let's talk about the basics. The big thing I want you to take away uh, from this part right here is that we want to continue to use placeholders. Because what these placeholders do is they really help us kind of set up the equation. So for example, with number riddles, we'll usually have like the sum of two numbers is equal to something. We want to set up what these two numbers are, and then we want to think about them. We have the, the smaller, we have the larger. When it comes to geometry problems, it might be something similar to where we're going to use a formula, like perimeter is equal to 2 times the quantity length plus width. And what we might want to do is, again, continue to use placeholders. Perimeter is equal to 2 times something plus something. So placeholders are a great tool to help us set up the equation. Now. Something else I want to talk about is what we kind of have going on here. And so we're going to have two things. So I'm going to label them T1 and T2. So this stands for thing one and thing two. And occasionally, occasionally there might be a thing three in there as well. Now we have to understand is that one of these T's uh, is going to be X. It's going to be a variable. Okay, so if we're talking about number riddles, one of them is x. We're talking about consecutive uh, number problems or consecutive integer problems. The first one's always x. But then the next one is going to be an expression of x. And what that means is it could be something like 3x plus 4. It could be x plus 2. It could be 2x, 2x minus 5 or something like that. We have all these options, but it helps us to understand that you know, as we're setting these things up, one of them is going to be x, and then the other one or two are going to be some expression of x, and it's going to vary from problem to problem depending on what we have. So now that we've gone over the basics, let's take a look at some problems and just kind of run through them together. So the first one I have for us is the sum of two numbers is 47. Find both numbers if the larger is two more than twice the smaller. Now, again, the structure here for the for these uh, number riddles is we're going to have two numbers being added together. And so what we're going to get from here, these two numbers, is one is going to be the smaller one, and the one's going to be the larger one. And then it's going to equal something. Now, there's another variation where we're going to have a difference. And we've got to be careful here. So if we're doing like a difference of two numbers, and we have a positive number, whatever it might be, then we have to remember it's going to be the larger minus the smaller number. That's the only way you're going to have a positive result. So let's keep this in mind. So with our number riddles, the two things we've got to figure out are what's the small one, what's the large one. So with this first problem, we have the sum of two numbers. So one number plus another number is 47. I'm going to set up the equation. Oops, 47. There we go. Now, we want to find both numbers if the larger is two more than twice the smaller. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write an L, I'm going to write an S. I'm going to put equal signs here. These are the two numbers I'm dealing with, and they're going to eventually go over here into these two placeholders. I want to see which one I know nothing about. Now I'm told the larger is something based on the smaller. So that gives me information about the larger, meaning I know nothing about the smaller. So my smaller one is going to become x. Then I need to read what it says about the larger. Larger is 2 more than twice the smaller. Well, 2 more than twice the smaller is going to be 2x plus 2. Now I take this information and I put it in over here. x, 2x plus 2. At this point, I've established an equation I can solve. I can start combining some like terms. 3x plus 2 is equal to 47, and I can start solving the equation. So subtract 2, and I'm going to have 3x is equal to 45, divide by 3, x equals 15. Now that's one of the numbers. The way I can find the other number is I could either plug this into that expression there, or I could do 47 minus 15, which will give me 32. And so my two numbers are 15 and 32. Box it, walk away. Let's do another one. 
the difference of two numbers is 15. So here we're talking about the difference of two numbers. So we have one number minus another one is equal to 15. Since 15 is positive, that means my larger number is going to be on the left. My smaller is going to be on the right. And again, I want to do the same thing. I want to write down what the expressions are for larger and smaller. So here I'm told larger is three more than twice the smaller. So again, I know nothing about the smaller number. That's going to be x. Larger, three more than twice the smaller, 2x plus 3. Now I put these into their places. So the larger will go there, the smaller goes there. So I have 2x plus 3 minus x is equal to 15. Now I've set up the equation, and I just have to go about solving. Combine my like terms to get x plus 3 is equal to 15. Subtract 3, I get x is equal to 12. Now I have to think here, 12 would go here. So I need something minus 12 that is 15. So I could either add 12, or I could plug 12 into this. Either way, I'm going to get 12 for one of the numbers and 27 for the other number. So for example, if I put it in here, I'd have 2 times 12 plus 3. That's 24 plus 3, and that's 27. Or here, I'd get 27 as well. We have options. All right, next, let's look at some more number riddles. So this is the sum of consecutive integers. Got two quick ones for you. Now with these, we have two types. We have just regular ones, which is going to correspond to x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. If we're adding up a couple of numbers. Then we'll have our even slash odd ones. And if that's the case, we get x, x plus 2, x plus 4. Because the difference between even and odd consecutive integers is always 2. You know, for example, if we go 3, 5, 7, you're jumping by 2 each time. If we go 4, 6, 8, same idea, you're jumping by 2. So let's take a look at what we have here. First one, the sum of three consecutive integers is negative 3. Well, I'm going to use my placeholders. I'm going to set up the equation like that. First one is x. We don't know what it is. Now it's a reading problem. Three consecutive. This means regular consecutive numbers. So the next one is x plus 1, x plus 2. Now we start, we have the equation, we can go about solving it. Combine all our x's, we have 1, 2, 3 of them, plus 3 is equal to negative 3. Now here, take your time and make sure you're doing it correctly. Subtract 3 from both sides, we'll have 3x is equal to negative 6, oops, may have jumped the gun there, negative 6, divide by 3, divide by 3, and we get x is equal to negative 2. And so now, we have to think about what this means. Let's see here. This one is negative 2. If we add 1 to it, that's going to give me negative 1. And then I add 2 to my negative 2, I want to get 0. So my three integers are negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Box it, walk away. Now let's do another one. This one is the sum of three consecutive odd integers is negative three. What are those integers? Well again, let's set up the problem. Three integers equals negative three. Here, what I want to do is start off with x, but since it said odd, that means I have to go with plus two and plus four as my next two integers. So x plus two, x plus four. Now, combine my like terms, I have 3x plus 6 is equal to negative 3. Subtract 6 from both sides, 3x equals negative 9. Divide by 3, x equals negative 3. So again, that would go right here. What's the next integer? It's going to be negative 1. What's going to be the next one? I add 4 to negative 3, positive 1. And here you can even see how I'm kind of using this structure to help me figure out what the numbers are. So negative 3, negative 1, and 1. Found the integers. Okay, almost there. A couple more. Now let's talk about geometry.
first thing with geometry is we have to know some basic vocab. And we've already talked about this. So, you know, we have complementary, supplementary. We need to know what perimeters are, you know, angle sums of triangles, stuff like that. So you know this, then we're just doing the same thing, where we're using placeholders and we're setting up some equations to equal some number. So the perimeter of a rectangle is 92 centimeters. Find the length and the width if the length, sorry, if the width is four more than twice the length. All right, well, let's break this down. Let's actually draw a picture first. We have a rectangle. The perimeter is equal to 92. Now, normally this rectangle will have a length and a width. Now over here, I want to figure out what length and width actually equal. So again, I'm going to read the problem. If the width is four more than twice the length, I have essentially an equation here. Width is. So I'm going to write this as an expression of x. I know nothing about length, so I'm going to let that just be regular x. Now the width is four more than twice that length, so four more than twice x, 2x plus 4. So now I have those two pieces. And so really my length here is going to be x. My width is 2x plus 4. We have a perimeter. We're adding all four of those sides to get 92. So we can use our formula. P is equal to 2 times the quantity length plus width. And now we're going to substitute all the information we have. We know that P is 92. So that equal to 2 times, and then instead of saying L, I'll say X, and then plus my width, which is going to be 2X plus 4. Now I have the equation, and I can go about solving it. The way I'm going to solve it is I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and divide everything by 2. That way I get rid of this 2, and I simplify that number. And so, let's see here, 91 divided by 2, oops, 92. 92 divided by 2 is 46. And now I'm going to combine my x's. So once I divide by 2, I got rid of these parentheses. So I have 3x plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. And I have 42 is equal to 3x. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 14. Now I can plug this x value into here, 2 times 14 plus 4, and figure out what the rest should be. That's going to be 28 plus 4, which is 32. And so my length is equal to 14. My width is equal to 32 centimeters each. And there we go. That's how we do a rectangular uh, perimeter problem. Now, let's take a look at an isosceles triangle. Now, isosceles triangles can come in two general forms. They can come like this, or they can come like this, where the two congruent sides are either larger or smaller than the other one. For our sake, it, like when we're just kind of sketching it out, it doesn't really matter what we go with. I think just to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to go with like the, maybe the more quote-unquote conventional one, which is like this. So these are our two congruent sides. And so let's see what we have. The perimeter of an isosceles triangle is 37, so P equals 37. If the two congruent sides are one more than twice the other side, what are the side lengths? Well, these lines right here have to be the same. I was given information about it. The two congruent sides are something compared to this other side down here. So other side is this guy right here. This one's an unknown to me. That's X. The two congruent sides, though, are going to be one more than twice that one. So 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. And they're both 2x plus 1 because they're congruent. They're the same. Now the way perimeter works is we're going to just take all three of our side lengths, add them up, and that has to equal 37 because that's what we're told. So I have x, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. This gives me 5x plus 2 is equal to 37. Subtract 2, subtract 2. 5x equals 35. x equals 7. So this part side here is 7 centimeters. And then this side is going to be 2 times 7 plus 1, which is 14 plus 1, 
15 centimeters. So here I've found all those side lengths. Finally, let's do an angle problem. So again, right off the bat, vocab. I see complementary, that means that we're talking about 90 degrees. So one angle plus another angle is going to equal 90 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do is one of these is probably going to be smaller and the other one's going to be larger, or it just might be what it is, what it, it, it will be what it is. So uh, we have angle one, angle two, but I'll just going to use small and large. Now, one of these is just going to be X. And according to this, oh, it says, all right, the smaller angle is six less than one third the other. We're given an equation about that smaller angle. The larger one, we were given nothing about. So this is x, and then this one I have to be really careful with. And this is why I include the example here, because we get some fractions. It's going to be fun. Smaller angle is 6 less than one-third the other. Here's my other. One-third of it is going to be one-third x. 6 less than that is going to be taking away 6. So now I have one-third x minus 6 plus x equals 90. I have my equation, and I can go about solving it. Now again, we have to be careful here. This is, there's a phantom 1 there. And so instead of saying 1, I'm going to write 3 over 3, like that. So when I go to add my like terms, x and 1 third x, I'll have 4 thirds x minus 6 is equal to 90. Add 6 to both sides, and now I have 4 thirds x is equal to 96. All right, now to clean out this fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 thirds, which is 3 fourths. 3 fourths. This completely cancels everything out, so I'm left with x equals. And then here, I have to play around a little bit with my fractions. So 96 and 4 will reduce. So let's see here. So 4 goes into 9 two times, leaving me with, or becoming 8, leaving me with 1 over. 16, so uh, 4 goes into 16 four times. So in other words, 4 goes into 96 24 times. Now I need to multiply these two together. 24 times 3, that's 72. So one of my angles, the x angle, is 72 degrees. That is the larger one. So let's put that here, 72. The other one is one third of that minus 6. Now you can do it that way. Seems complicated, so I'm just going to make it a lot easier and go minus 72 here to get 8. That becomes an 8, borrow 18. So we have 18 degrees and 72 degrees. And that's how we do a bunch of these problems. Again, a lot of it boils down to using your placeholders, help you set up the equation. Then you have to understand that one of them is going to be x, whatever it is we're setting up in here. And the other one is this expression of x. After that, you're just solving equations. So I hope that this video has helped you understand this process and how it works. Good luck with your homework or practice, and let me know if you have any further questions.